Okay, so up to now, all of our questions were uh, in the form that a circuit was given to us and the gain was asked from us or the input impedance or the output impedance or something else, right? Either DC or AC analysis, it was analysis. Now, we're going to start a new kind of, we're going to start talking about a new kind of question, which is a design question. It's kind of like the final answer is given to us and we are asked to actually design a circuit. It's kind of like your customer or your boss, they're going to ask you that, okay, so I'm not a circuit designer, you're my circuit, electronic circuit designer. Um, I want a gain of, uh, for example, five as shown here, and your power budget is only five milliwatt. Go design whatever it is, right? Whatever you want, go design it. And then, oh, the other thing that they want is the input impedance of 50 kilo. So as long as you meet these things, you're good. Like they don't care as long as you give them a black box that meets these requirements, they don't care what is inside that black box. What is the circuit? Okay. So let's not have that much of freedom. Let's actually start with the simpler design because when you have uh, too much freedom, it's just going to make things a lot more complicated. So let's say that we know that we're going to use a circuit like this. It's a common source amplifier. It's the last circuit that we, we analyzed in the last slide. It's basically the one that has, it's a common source amplifier, which has a bypass capacitor in the, in the source. So that in the AC analysis, it's not actually a common source with the degeneration. It's a normal common source amplifier with some biasing circuit and an RG, right? And uh, when it says design this common source amplifier to have such a gain and such an input resistance and such a power budget, it means that find out all of the values for these resistors the geometry of your transistor, the W over L, I mean, and uh, basically you have to tell me how much basically, uh, what, are, what values of resistors are going to be there to actually meet these requirements. And then you can imagine that this is kind of an open-ended question that um, I might solve it and you might solve it and we might actually get to different answers. We just have to make sure that we meet all those requirements. As long as we do that, um, both of our designs are actually correct and there's no incorrect design we might have a better or worse design but then well we're both in we're, we both meet the requirements okay let's get started and let's see how do we actually approach this okay so gain is given it's equal to five what was the gain of this stage well if you go back to the previous slide you're going to see that the gain of this stage v out over v in is going to be negative gm rd times R1 in parallel with R2 over R1 in parallel with R2 plus Rg. Well, nobody's telling us, nobody's stopping us from, you remember that like basically this was an attenuation factor, right? This term. Nobody's stopping us from making Rg equal to zero. This makes our lives a lot easier because if I make Rg equal to zero, then, well, these two cancel out with each other, and my gain simplifies to negative GMRD. I have less number of parameters to deal with. It's going to be an easier design, right? And there's no requirement in the design question that RG has to be this value, right? The only extra requirement that is given to us is that there has to be a 400 millivolt uh, DC uh, across the RS. So I know that here I should have 0.4 volts okay other than that there's nothing about rg so let's make it zero make our lives easier okay so if my gain is that um let's see where can i start the power budget is given power is actually drawn from this guy right that's the only source of uh, voltage that i have in this circuit and i'm gonna have two different currents drawn from that i'm gonna have this current that i'm gonna call id and this current that i'm gonna call ib or bias so what I know is that power, which is equal to 5 milliwatt, is equal to VDD times ID plus IP. Okay, the value of VDD is actually 1.8 volts. This tells me that ID plus IP has to be equal to 5 milliwatt divided by 1.8, 2.78 milliamp. 
Okay. The first design question is how do I distribute between how, how do I distribute this 2.78 between ID and IB? Well, looking at this, I can say that if you remember, we said this IB, the bias current, has to be as small as possible. Why? Because, well, it's just there because I have a resistive divider. It doesn't actually do any job for us, right? On the other hand, with ID, I know that the bigger it is, the bigger my GM is going to be. So it actually is helping me. So when, when I'm allowed to go up to 5 milliwatt, you have to remember, you have to get as close as possible to that 5 milliwatt. It's given to you. It's not like um, your, your customer is telling you that you can do 5 milliwatt and then they're going to reward you if you go with 2 milliwatt. No. Like you, if, if they say 5 milliwatt, it means that up to 5 milliwatt should be used, right? So 5 milliwatt is your power budget, and we want to use most of it or all of it. And uh, I want to spend as much as I can on the ID and as little as I can on IB. So the first design question that I'm going to make is that I'm going to say let's go with 2.7 to ID and 0 0.08 to IB, okay? So I might actually get back to this and see if I have to fix this, but that's very unlikely because, well, the IB I want it to be small anyway, so that, that seems to be a right number. I'm going to just check it later if um, that's enough. Okay, so if I know I, the, the value of ID, well, then I can say that you're telling me that RS should have 400 millivolt across it, and I know that ID is flowing through RS, so RS times ID is equal to 0 0.4 volts. ID is 2.7 milliamp. That tells me that RS has to be 400 milliamp, millivolt divided by 2.7 milliamp. That will give me um, 148 ohms. Okay, I got my RS value. Next. Next, I'm going to look at this gain. So I got some values from my power. Let's look at the gain. The gain is negative GM times RD. Okay, and this has to be equal to 5. So I know that negative GM times RD has to be equal to 5. What is GM? Well, because I have the value of ID, I'm going to try to write it based on that. So I know that GM is 2ID divided by VGS minus VTH. This has to be equal to, this times RD has to be equal to 5. Therefore, well, I know that this guy is 2.7 milliamp and tertial voltage is 0 0.5 volts. Therefore, it tells me that, um, let me change the color tells me that RD over VGS minus V threshold should be equal to 5 over 5.4 milli, which is almost equal to 926. Okay, now tertial voltage is given, but VGS and RD, we have to decide about them. And here again, we have to make a decision and then we might actually come back to it. So just for the sake of simplicity, this is 0.5. I know that. Let's choose this one to be 1 volt so that the difference is only 0.5, and make, which makes our math um, a lot simpler. Okay, so if I go with VGS equal to 1 volt, that tells me that based on this equation, I can get my RD equal to uh, 463 ohms. Okay, that tells me that because GMRD is equal to 5, therefore GM is going to be equal to 10.8 milliamp per volt. Great. Now they have my GM, my RD, my ID. Um, I don't have the geometry of my transistor, so that should be the next step. I know that ID is equal to 1 over 2 mu n C ox W over L VGS minus V threshold squared. Out of these, 
I have this, I have this, I have this, and well, mu and C ox together, and I have ID. So I can easily calculate my W over L. If you do the math, you get W over L to be equal to 260. And this is a unit left, unit less kind of a parameter because, well, I'm dividing some uh, something out that is uh, with the unit of meter over something else that is in meters, so they cancel out with each other. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to do is to calculate R1 and R2. So I know that VGS is, I chose this, I chose this to be one volt. And I know that my VS from the uh, given, givens of the, uh, the question is 0.4. Therefore, my gate voltage is actually 1.4. And this is really R2 over R1 plus R2 times VTD, which is 1.8. So now can I just freely choose R1 and R2? No, because I have another requirement in this question, which is related to the input impedance. The input impedance is supposed to be 50 kilo ohm, and I know that the input impedance of this transistor is, this circuit is R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. That should be 50 kilo ohm. So based on these two, I can easily find my R1 to be equal to 64 kilo ohm and R2 to be equal to 225 kilo ohm. Great. So uh, addition of these two is going to be somewhere around 300K. Uh, 1.8 volt divided by 300K is going to give us something in the order of a few microamps. So this 0.08 that initially we allocated to this, which is 80 microamp, is more than enough. So maybe if I want to go back, I would increase this 2.7 to 2.71 or 2.72, but it doesn't really worth it. It's it, it's pretty good design. I don't have to change it by that much. The last thing I want, I have all the resistors value values and then also the geometry of my transistor. The last thing I have to check is if this is actually in saturation. So to check that if it is in saturation, I know that my VDS is equal to VD minus VS. VD is VDD minus RD ID, and VS is, well, 0.4. If I do the math, I get 0 0.15. How about what my VGS minus VTH? Well, I chose VGS to be one volt, and VTH was 0.5, so this is 0.5. Oops. So that's the problem. I'm actually in triad. That's a really bad news. It means that I have to start over. So because my VGS minus VTH is actually greater than my VDS. So I have to start over. But then before starting over, I have to see where did I make a mistake. I made some decisions along the way, and I have to go back and see where did I make the mistake? First of all, I have to see if I can actually, uh, where does this problem is really coming from? It really comes from the fact that my VDS is actually quite small, right? And my VDS, in terms of my source voltage, it's actually given, it's 0.4, so I can't do anything about it. And uh, so it's about my VD. And if I look at my VD, which is this part of my expression, VDD is constant, so it's really RDID. Now, among those two, between these two, ID was really set by the power. I can't really make it smaller. I don't want to make it smaller because the bigger the ID, the, big, the better gain I'm going to get out of this. So maybe, maybe my RD was a, a little bit too much, right? Maybe that's where I made a mistake because I needed my GM RD to be actually equal to five, but nobody told me that my RD has to be uh, what, what did we found it to be? 463. I could have a smaller RD, bigger GM, and then things would have been differently, right? Okay, let's try that. So where does this RD really come from? It comes from the fact that, okay, I chose this VGS quite randomly. I chose this VGS to be one volt. And the only reason I had for that was I wanted my math to be like simpler. So it looks like that's not a good reason. So I have to make, so I can see here that if I make 
this VGS, so looking at exactly at this fraction, if I make this VGS smaller, then the denominator becomes smaller. So to get the same value for the fraction, my numerator could be smaller, therefore my RD becomes smaller. So let's say that second round, Let's say that I make my VGS 0.75 instead of 1 volt. Therefore, the difference is going to be 0.25. This makes the denominator half of its value before. It was 0.5. Now it becomes 0.25. Therefore, the numerator becomes half. Therefore, my new RD is going to be equal to half of that value. So 463 divided by 2 is going to be 231.5. Two hundred and thirty one point five ohms. Okay, now based on that, my GM is going to be different. My GM has to be actually double the value that it was before, so twenty one point six milliampere volt. Because I want GM times RD to be still five. So GM RD has to be equal to five, therefore GM has to be equal to um, twice that value, twenty one point six milliamp per volt. Okay, now based on these, and uh, now looking at this equation, I can say, so this was from here, and this was from here. Now looking at this equation, I can say that I can recalculate, because my VGS minus VTH is actually changed, so I can recalculate W over L. I can guess what's going to be, because my VGS minus VTH is actually half, so to the power of 2, the right side of the equation has become a quarter of what it was before. So W over L has to be four times bigger to balance that out or to compensate for that. So W over L is going to be four times what it was before. So 216 becomes 864. Okay. Now based on this, um, I can go ahead and calculate my um, VD, uh, VDS. So my VDS... The new VDS is going to be, again, 1.8 VDD minus RD, which is uh, 231.5 times ID, which is 2.7 milliamp, and minus V source, which is still 0.4. So that new VDS is going to be 775 millivolts. How about VGS minus VTH? Well, that was, VGS was, I, I chose it to be 0.75 minus 0.5. I'm going to have 250 millivolts. Great. So this tells me that I'm in uh, saturation. So happy. It's a good design. So just to review whatever what we did, we started with a design question. We started with the specifications. We don't start with the resistor values or the, the geometry of our transistor. We're actually starting with the design specifications, such as gain, input impedance, power consumption, and things like that. We start with power. We calculated the biasing. And from there, I calculated um, the value of my source resistance. And then from gain, I had to make a decision. Maybe that's the biggest decision. That's the most important decision I made in my design, that... I know GM RD should be 5, but then how much of it should go to GM, how much of it should go to RD? I started with a RD value of 463 and GM of 10.8 milliampere volt, and I did the rest of calculations. Everything went well, but then at the end of the day, I found out that my uh, VDS minus, uh, my VDS becomes smaller than VGS minus VTH, therefore I'm in triad. I looked back and I tried to figure out where did I do where did I do I do a mistake, and I realized that the mistake is really coming from um, too large of a uh, drain resistor RD. So to fix for that or to compensate for that, I started making RD half of its value, making GM double the val the older value, and then recalculated everything and things were okay now. The last thing I've I didn't write here is that now my new VG. So let's write it up here. So new VG, because VGS is actually equal to um, 
750 and vs is 400 so it's basically 400 plus 750 that's uh, 1.15 volts right this means that my r2 over r1 plus r2 times vdd has to be 1.15 and while well, the input impedance is still the same r1 r2 over r1 plus r2 has to be equal to 50 kilo based on these I'm, i have to actually calculate my new r1 and r2 i think i can leave that to you guys to calculate it if you had any questions you can ask me during the office hour